beings are a very small minority. So to ignore the opportunity of this esoteric teaching is very, very risky. If we miss this opportunity for self-realization, again, we will have to accept the cycle of birth and death, samsara. And not only that, if we do not fulfill the mission of life in this creation, then after annihilation of the creation, we will have to stay suspended within the body of Lord Mahavishnu for millions and trillions of years. And again, we will have to come to this material world to suffer. So therefore it is called Anadi Karma Phale. Anadi means before the creation. This karmic cycle of birth and death is going on even from before this material creation, from before the beginning of time. So you cannot know all the intricacies of your karma. Some people think it is very impressive to remember one's past life. Even accepting that this is possible for them, then what about the past lives extending back even before this universe was created, before the beginning of time? How can you understand those trillions of years and millions of births? It is not possible for any human being. It is beyond the capacity of human intelligence. But Krishna knows, and he remembers everything from all those lives. And to teach the befooled living entities, Krishna personally comes to this material world and speaks Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is very much anxious to take us back to home, back to Godhead, because we are part and parcel of Krishna. We are his children. Suppose your son is loitering on the street. Are you not anxious? Oh, there may be some accident and the poor boy would be killed. So you go, try to find him and bring him safely home. Similarly, Krishna's mood is like that. We are in this material world, simply suffering life after life. Dukhalayam Ashashvatam, Bhagavad Gita 8.15. This place is miserable, but by Maya's illusion, we are taking this miserable condition of life as happiness. This is called Maya, literally, that which is not. There is no happiness in this material world. Compared to our real existence in the spiritual world, everything here is miserable. The sooner we understand that everything is miserable in this material world, and the sooner we prepare ourselves to leave this material world and go back to home, back to Krishna, the sooner we come to our senses. Otherwise, whatever we are doing, we are simply being defeated because we are missing the real aim of human life. Nate vidu svarta gatim hi vishnum. Srimad Bhagavatam 7.5.31 Durasaya, we are hoping against hope. It will never be fulfilled. But we are trying to adjust things here to become happy without God. But it will never be accomplished. Nate vidu svarta gatim hi vishnum durasaya. Durasaya means the hope which will never be fulfilled. So all these materialistic persons, they are fools, rascals, miscreants, because they are increasing these material activities. They think that by increasing material activities, they will be happy. But no, that is not possible. It's durashaya, an impossible hope. All of us are tied very tight, bound by the laws of material nature, forced to accept the results of our karma. Still, we are thinking that we are independent. The scientists are trying to avoid God, to become independent of His law by science. But that is not possible. We are under the grip of the material nature. The material nature means the agent of Krishna. So, we are always in perplexity like Arjuna, thinking what to do or what not to do. But we can transcend this difficulty if we accept the principle of the esoteric teaching that we must act only for Krishna's service. So take direction from Krishna through Krishna's representative and do it. Then there is no more bondage to the law of karma. Otherwise, we are bound by the reaction of every act and we cannot get out. So Arjuna's perplexity, whether I shall fight or not fight, is resolved by fighting for Krishna. Then it is all right. Just like Hanuman fought for Lord Ramachandra, he did not fight for himself. 
So we should understand the policy of all these materialistic persons. They are trying to enjoy God's property without his permission. Therefore, as long as there are people who are breaking the law of God, there will always be fighting and war in this material world. It must be there, because the karma of those who are breaking God's law demands it. So, just like in the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, God's law is stated as an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now, of course, the politicians use this as a justification for uh, different kinds of attacks and warfare and things like that. But actually, it's a statement of the law of karma. Uh, whatever we do to others, good or bad, returns to us, and we have to accept it. Why? Because it's the law of karma. It's a natural law. Just like this morning, the rain is coming down. Maybe you could hear it in the background. Uh, it was raining very strong just a few minutes ago. Uh, nobody can do anything about it. Uh, if it's going to rain hard, uh, there's nothing we can do. We just have to deal with it, tolerate it, accept it. So the same is true of our karma. There's no way that we can get out of karma. No adjustment of scientific principles or gadgets or uh, different political arrangements or economic development or anything like this is going to stop or uh, change our karma one little bit. Uh, we have to accept the law of karma and its results because it's a natural law, like gravity. Uh, nobody can get around it. We have to deal with it. Therefore, the only way out of this entanglement of the law of karma in this material world is by worshiping Krishna. And worshiping Krishna, just going in the temple and doing some ritual, uh, is not enough. That's only the beginning. Really, we need to dedicate all of our activities to Krishna. And then, whatever we do is without karmic reaction. Uh, this is such a simple idea uh, that when we work for ourselves, we have to take the reaction. When we work for Krishna, then there is no reaction, because Krishna is the director of this material law. He is the uh, predominator of material nature. He is the creator of this material world. So he is not subject to its laws, and if he likes, he can exempt us from those laws as well. So that doesn't mean we can do anything we like. We have to follow Krishna's instructions. And when we work like that, under Krishna's direction, then we're free from the law of karma, and we can attain liberation and uh, a return to our original position in the spiritual world. So that's this esoteric teaching. And it's there for the benefit of every living entity. It's not just for Americans or just for Indians or that uh, just only Brahmins can apply it. Everyone can apply it. Uh, all we have to do is take the results of our activities and offer them to Krishna's service. This is called karma yoga. Karma yoga is the beginning of devotional service. But devotional service can be almost any activity, provided it's done in a way that's pleasing for Krishna. So whatever we do in this life, if we offer it to Krishna, that becomes our perfection. And that can take us back to home, back to the spiritual world where we can exist eternally in our perfect bodies. hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of transcendental music and mantras. <laughs>